morning. Welcome to Sunday School on the 17th of May 2020 as we continue our series on the doctrines of salvation. Today is the 10th in our series on the beautiful doctrine of justification. I know it'll be a blessing to you. Now God, if you go to Isaiah 53 uh, in verse 11, God prophesied of this doctrine. Uh, Isaiah 53, of course, is Many would refer to it as the gospel in the Old Testament and prophesied of the suffering and death of Jesus Christ on the cross. But notice here in Isaiah 53, verse 11, He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So there we see that God prophesied that Jesus Christ would justify many. Justification is where God declares us just. It's similar to last week's doctrine of imputation, where God imputes to us the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But this goes, if you will, one step further, where God actually declares us to be just, completely sinless, based upon the merits of our Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll understand that doctrine today. So let's go to prayer and understand this beautiful doctrine of justification. Lord, thank you for the privilege to study your word. I pray you'll use it now to teach us and again to make us more grateful for our salvation, what you've given us through Jesus Christ. We love you and I pray you'll guide us in your truth. Use this in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this doctrine of justification, again, if you go to 2 Peter chapter 2, I'd like to show you um, an example from the Old Testament, a very striking example, if you will, and that is in the person of Lot. Most of us know uh, Lot's story, and there is no goodness found in that story. There's only a man who was willing to sacrifice his daughters to entertain strangers, a man who chose to live in wickedness, a man who um, lost his wife to covetousness and then committed incest with his daughters and a messed up life. And yet we hit her second Peter, we go to Second Peter chapter two and uh, verse six, the Bible says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man. So here in the New Testament, God is referring to Lot, who was a very wicked man and, and messed up family and so forth, as, as someone who was just and righteous. And so this is what we're talking about today, is how God, in his infinite power and mercy and grace and love, uh, is willing to declare us just based on Jesus Christ and his righteousness. So he declares us to be just. Hence the phrase, or the word justification, or to justify. And so we see here from, from Lot a foreshadow of what God would do. We see a prophecy in Isaiah 53. But I want us to understand this morning that justification can only come from God. And again, this is a verification that there is no way to heaven outside of God's way. Because man cannot make himself just. Man cannot make himself without sin because he's a sinner. Uh, and so without God's intervention, without God's supernatural justification, we can't go to heaven. And, and so if we go to Romans chapter 5, I want us to see that justification is a gift. And we can only receive it from the Lord. Now we're going to talk a little bit later about how, where justification comes from. But I want us to understand for starters, that it can only come from God. Notice Romans chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men 
unto justification of life. Now, twice in that, that passage, we saw the phrase free gift. We cannot earn justification. It is given to us by our Heavenly Father based on the merits of Jesus Christ when we trust Him as our Savior. So only God can justify. That is the point this morning. And it is a gift. It, it can be received, but it can't be paid for. It can't be earned. It is a free gift, the gift of justification. While we're in Romans, go to chapter 8, if you would, and look at verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. That'll be a future doctrine. So notice God justifies. Only God justifies. Look at Romans 8.33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. So only God can justify. That is the point I want to make right here. Only God can justify man. Man cannot justify man. The church cannot justify man. Good works cannot justify man. Only God can justify man, and man can receive it, but it's a gift. God offers it through Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary, and man can choose to receive it, but it is a free gift. It's a gift of justification that can only be given by God himself. Now, the Bible makes it very clear, just to drive the point home, go to Acts 13, Acts chapter 13, that justification is not by works. It is absolutely not by works. As we read in Romans eleven six, grace or works, you can't mix the two. Notice uh, Acts 13, verse 38. The Bible says here, Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you cannot be justified by the law of Moses. Justification cannot come from the law. That is what God is teaching us here. Let's look at Romans chapter 3. And again, our point now is that justification cannot be earned. It is not by works. It is not by the law. Look at Romans 3.20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. That's as clear as it can be. The deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. It can't happen through deeds. It cannot happen through works. It cannot happen through the law. Romans 3.28, turn there. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. <clears throat> so justification is not something that we can earn. Justification is something that we have to receive as a gift from God. Look at Romans chapter 4, verse 2. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory. Hence why the pride of man leads him to follow religions where he thinks he can earn his salvation, because then his pride is involved. But not before God. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That's last week's doctrine of imputation. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So... God is the only one that can justify the ungodly, and we cannot earn it through works or through the law. One more, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. And what we're, the point we're driving home now is that we cannot earn justification through works or the law. Galatians 2, 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith. Of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so what we've established is that God gave us a foreshadow of justification through the death of Jesus Christ's prophecy in Isaiah 53. We see that God used Lot as, as an example of someone who was just despite their outward behavior because justification is not received through man doing good works. It's not based on his behavior. It's based on God granting it to him. It is a free gift and based solely on the merits of Jesus Christ, we cannot earn it through the law or through works. So, let us understand now, uh, lastly, this morning, how is it that justification takes place? It happens, as we saw, only from God. It's a gift. But I want us to understand that justification comes through 
uh, many different avenues, all, all of them connected to God and Jesus Christ. But the first one, of course, is faith. It's by faith. And that is the most important. So let's go to Romans 3 again and look at verse 26 this time. <clears throat> and I want us to see, first of all, that justification is by faith. So <clears throat> just as our salvation is by faith, and it can't be of works, justification, which is part of our salvation, is strictly by faith. Romans 3, verse 26, the Bible says, Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision, wrong chapter, Romans 3, 26, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth, in Jesus. So notice the connection between justification and believing. And God there is referred to as the justifier. He's the only one who can justify. And then while you're in Romans 3, look at verse um, 28. The Bible says, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith. And then Romans 3.30, seeing it is one God which shall justify the uncircumcision by faith and the circumcision through faith. It's only by faith that we can receive justification. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. It's faith. Romans 5, 1, Therefore being justified by faith. Justification only comes when we trust Jesus Christ. And then uh, Galatians 3, 24, we'll look at one more. So I want us to see that it all comes from God, but it's, the different ways that our justification uh, is granted. So notice Galatians chapter 3 and verse 24. And the Bible says here, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So it's by faith that we are justified. Now, secondly, Romans 3, 24, it's also by grace. <clears throat> Just like we're saved by grace, we're justified by grace. God's grace, of course, Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace. So justified by his grace. So it's through faith and it's by the grace of God. Go to Titus chapter 3 and verse 7. And the Bible says that being justified by his grace. So we're justified by faith. We're justified by God's grace. Go to Romans chapter 4 verse 25. And we'll see another uh, means by which we are justified from the Lord and Jesus. Romans chapter 3, verse 24, being justified freely by his, sorry, Romans 4, 25. I had those two backwards. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. We are justified also through the resurrection. Again, Jesus Christ conquered death. When we are born again, we're placed into him. We talked about that in regeneration. And through his resurrection, we are justified. So we're justified by faith. We're justified through his grace. We're justified through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, one more or two more, Romans 5, 9. The Bible says, much more than being now justified by his blood. Praise God. We are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And then uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 11, we'll look at one more here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. Well, the Bible says, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, justifies us because He is the one who saves us. He is the one who regenerates us. He's also the one who justifies us, God the Spirit. So we find in this study this morning that justification can only come from God, that justification cannot be earned, it is a free gift, and that only God can grant it, only He is the justifier, and that when our justification takes place the day that we trust Jesus Christ, it takes place through faith. When we exercise our faith in Jesus Christ as our only hope, as our only Savior, as our only one who can uh, grant us uh, eternal life, we receive justification. And that is through the grace of God that we receive justification. It is through 
the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we receive justification. It is through the blood of Jesus Christ that we receive salvation. And it is through the God's Holy Spirit that we receive salvation and justification. All of that is one, isn't it? It all happens the day, the moment that we place our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. And when that happens, we are justified. So we praise God for the doctrine of justification. God declares us to be just based on the merits of the death and the burial and the resurrection and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Through his grace, he saves us and justifies us. Hallelujah. Now next week, we'll be looking at the doctrine of preservation, often referred to as eternal security. Then we'll be looking at the doctrine of sanctification, and then lastly, the doctrine of glorification. And then we'll be finished with our, our series on the doctrines of salvation. So thank you for joining us this morning. And I hope that this study on justification has been a blessing to you. Number 10 in our series on the doctrines of salvation. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this study, this opportunity to learn more about what you did for us at salvation. Thank you for Jesus and the price that he paid that we might be justified. Thank you for justifying us through the blood of Jesus and through his merits. And I pray, Lord, that uh, we will tell others that they can also be justified through what Jesus did. They must place their faith in him. So thank you, guide us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We'll see you here in a few minutes at the 11 o'clock service. God bless.